Welcome into K-State Online. I am Mason Voth, joined by Drew Galloway here on a Friday for your weekly K-State recruiting update. And believe it or not, not going to be football heavy today because it's kind of, I don't know, the, the last slow moment of high school football recruiting until when? When for you? When will it, when will it slow down again where you'll have maybe even a week uh, where there will be a lull? Maybe that little stretch right before December, like the the bowl game prep, that would yeah. be like the only the only time I think that this is that's like the next lull. Yeah. So uh, nothing significant to bring you in that regard right now, but we do have more news trickling in and uh, notable stuff in regards to K State basketball recruiting, which has taken off in a way that I mean. Two months ago, I, I don't know that we would have really known where basketball recruiting would be right now, at least in terms of high school talent, just because you, you think it's so transfer portal heavy now in college basketball and how meaningful is it to actually get high school recruits because you know, are they really going to make an impact the first year or two with you now and then can you even retain that type of player? Uh, it's, it's all going to be fascinating to see, but K-State's really kind of put their foot on the gas in terms of being – in the mix for some significant talent in the class of 2025, which is totally different from their 2024 approach where they had David Castillo locked down incredibly early in the process. I mean, he committed what summer or spring of 2023 is when he was done. So you knew that that was happening. And then the really only other person that they tried going for, um, they ended up not being able to get uh, because they you know, we're, we're so involved with Pat and Gongba and he ends up choosing Duke. So they only get one player. They really only seem to target two. 2025, it's expanded out a little bit more. And there are a lot of guys that they're in the mix for. But the most significant one of that group is A.J. DeBonsa, who is the number one player in the class of 2025 uh, from Massachusetts. And you see he's, he's a three, six, nine, 200. So he's got the size. He's got it all to look at and the most recent news is that he's locked in his official visit for the weekend of August 31st which coincidentally is K-State's kickoff against UT Martin so he will be in Manhattan for the start of football season Be before we talk any more about him as a player in terms of that visit date how significant do you think it is to get him for that game on a visit as opposed to you know some of the others that would be available there in September Yeah, I don't think that it's necessarily a, a coincidence that it's for the first game. I, I think that you'll still kind of have the hype around kind of football starting. You never know about like a, the Friday night game against Arizona, what what his schedule could have looked like. So I, I think that it, it's significant. And I, I think. Oh, we got Drew uh, on kind of. You froze no, on no, us there back. for a second. Uh, but yeah. I, uh, but I, th I think that it's it's important and significant to be that first visit because you kind of get to set the tone on what kind of everything else needs to hit. And, and I'd rather be that first visit if you're not going to be the last visit because everywhere in between is kind of like, okay, I don't know how I'd compare it to that first place that I was just at, but if you're going to kind of be that first one, you get to set the bar. And I think that that's an important thing and kind of a fun thing for K-State because K-State hasn't been involved in a player with a player like uh, AJ Devonsa in a really long time. I think it's significant when you think about the way that the schedule works out for K-State to start like game one, even if it is a, a lowly opponent, it, it's going to give you a couple of opportunities. It's a night game, and it's the first one of the year, so everybody's going to be looking forward to it. There, there will be anticipation. It'll be built up. People will be nuts about it to start with. And like you would theorize that K-State's going to have the ability to make a lot of plays in that game where the crowd could also get into it because that's really – that's the most important part of getting these basketball recruits or recruits for any other sport – to come and be able to see a football game day is you want them to be able to see what the crowd is like and start to think, okay, this is going to translate to me somehow. 
So I actually think it's the right type of opportunity there um, where, you know, it's a Saturday night, so you'll get to do everything beforehand in the buildup to that. And then you'll have that game and everything else as opposed to, you know, the, the Friday against Arizona, like could get things a little shaky the end of the, the month. You don't know when that Oklahoma State game will be. Um, and like it doesn't matter necessarily, but you feel better uh, when the recruit comes in and is going to see a win as opposed to like it would be electric if, if you bring a guy in, you, you know, you win some big, close, exciting game. But you could lose to Arizona, you could lose to Oklahoma State, and that's not as much fun. And then you see, you know, you see sides of fans sometimes too in that uh, circumstance that you you don't want to recruit to see. So I think I think this is really a good time to bring him in, and uh, it'll be like you said too the the timing of it to be able to kind of establish yourself as okay. He'll be here a little bit earlier than some of the other guys that they are uh, kind of talking to right now, and. and and then also, you know, in terms of Diabonsa, uh, where he he will be looking and where he ends up going. The, uh, the other visits for you to know in this recruitment, he will go to BYU in October. He will also go uh, to KU the week after K-State, and then he'll also see Baylor in North Carolina uh, over the course of that. So he'll have all these official visits wrapped up by mid-October. Uh, he already took visits to Auburn and – uh, he took one to USC, but that was under uh, the the Andy Infield staff, so uh, I don't think you have to worry about that. He could take an unofficial uh, to Auburn as well, but his official visit has already been done there. So that's kind of the notes on him. In, in terms of the player, I mean, we know, like, number one, that's pretty special, but this is not just a number one player and it's like a center or something, you know, like – this is a game-changing type of number one player here. And, and look, a lot of those guys are. Like, that sounds crazy to say, but I think most people understand, like, this is a playmaking number one, not just a, like, oh, here you go. We, we're going to give it to this guy. He can be dominant, but can he win a title for you? Like, I would I would point out Purdue in this circumstance. Like, Zach Eady was clearly the most unstoppable player in college basketball the last two seasons. but. Purdue did not win the national championship, and we saw that they were quite overmatched in the national championship against UConn because it's really tough to have your top player be a guy that can't actually create for himself and for others. That would not be the case here. Yeah, and, and Devonta can do a little bit of everything. He's that prototypical wing that is really kind of taking over college basketball and the NBA. Great length, great size super athletic can shoot really well he would be the best basketball player k-state's gotten out of the high school level like probably since michael beasley like N nigel pack really really good but devonza is on another level because devonza is probably a future top five top ten nba draft pick so i i think that with that he is probably better than a lot of other people that case it's even been involved with recently. Uh, the other thing too, uh, that I think is probably a, a noteworthy thing in this recruitment is that the, I don't believe that this will be a recruitment that, uh, he signs in November or December. Uh, th this will be probably like a February type of recruitment is kind of what it's sounding like. So in theory, there would be, you know, he comes for the official here, you would think probably could get an unofficial if you're still in the mix come when c basketball season's actually underway and you can get him in attendance for a game there possibly. Uh, it, it'll be interesting to see how it goes, but it's worth noting that K-State's still in the mix. And um, I mean, I know I, I everybody's kind of had little nuggets on this throughout the, the last couple of days and, and where everything's kind of gone. But, uh, you know, this was, this was one of the things that, uh, I'll give a shout out to to a couple of the other sides in this, um, but there were good quotes from Devonta's dad. If you go look at uh, Sam Lance's Twitter, uh, he talked to him and said, "Jerome Tang, first off, like the name. I'm a big Wu Tang Clan fan. He just told me AJ is going to play freely and have a good team around him, and I kind of like what he was saying. So we're going to give them a look. So you have the approval from you know the." the outside of DeBonson, not just himself, but the family intrigue there. Uh, and 
Like that's significant for K State because I think Jerome Tang and his staff, as much as they they are like a sell and a pull for the the players, I think they're probably even better recruiters of the families that they're you know involved with for these these players, um, and that you probably over the course of them being here, you'll have oh yeah m- more families that will have wanted to commit to Jerome Tang than even players would have. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that's a big thing too, and it, it's not just like that quote. I believe his dad, I can't remember in which update it was that came out in the last week or so that his dad even mentioned that uh, Jerome Tang flew out to Turkey to watch Devonsa play, and that that really kind of shows where uh, Jerome Tang and his staff believe Devonsa can go, and, and how much of a priority he is because you know Turkey is a long way away, so to go out there and watch him play, I think kind of really stood out to Devonce's family. Yeah, no doubt about it. So we'll see. We'll continue to follow it, keep you updated with it over at K-State Online. So find on three and uh, stay in the know there. The other thing that I wanted to bring everybody's attention to, this was a a new thing that's come out recently over on on three. And this is going to be fun for a lot of people out there that I know, obviously, you're in it for K-State football, but most people are also – very much interested in what's going on with high school football in the state of Kansas. I mean, we know that school like football in the South gets really good pub about, Oh, this is just, you know, it's football state. Kansas is very clearly a football state. Like people care about that more than anything when you're, you know, when you get down to it. And one of the newest things that on three has come out with is in partnership with Kenneth Massey and Massey ratings and you can now go to on three and find a list of high school football rankings. So these are the national rankings. So this this takes a bunch of the data and everything else and puts together these rankings. Um, and then you can break it down by states. So like if we go to Kansas, like it's got Bishop Miege uh, as the as the top team this year currently. Now this will obviously all totally update uh, as things go on. And then what you can do is going in there, you see Manhattan at number six, you can click on each school and it will take you to a team page. And this, these are some of the cool things about the team pages. So you can see the schedule right here and it spits out a prediction on all of these, which is something that we'll talk about in a, you know, a little bit more down the road here because uh, this is also something that is in place for all of the football, the NCAA football teams. Uh, in the country that you can go find that on their schedule page. So you see the predictions that are spit out there. Um, I'll let everybody know that right now, Manhattan projected to win 41 to 20 over Junction City this year. So uh, shout out to all the the Indians that want the silver trophy this season. This is probably that, my that favorite. Felt like, that felt kind of like a dig at a at fan there. No, no. I mean, I, I, hope, I hope he has great success, but I'm guessing we've got more <laughs> Indians than Blue Jays. Uh, I don't know. It's probably pretty close, but uh, also, I, you know, I didn't call games for Junction City. I did call Manhattan games. I was, you know, half of the voice of the yeah, Indians for like a, a year or two. Uh, and then this is the cool thing. So you can see current recruits under the roster page. We know that K-State very much involved for J.J. Dunnigan. Uh, and then notable alumni. This is, this is a fun one, too. So you can go in and see, you know, past recruits from these schools and kind of track along. I mean, obviously, we see a couple of you know, guys that have uh, made their way uh, to, to K-State and played there. And this is in place for Tate every Snyder team. Being up there, I'm curious. What did you say? Tate Snyder being a top five Manhattan Indian elite. Yeah, well, let's see. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it's not it's not the the deepest of, of roster there. Uh, so you can do that and you can go find any school that you want to obviously like here is maze. I think we have a good idea of, uh, what's going to, to go on there. Yeah. There's Avery Johnson. Uh, there you have it. Uh, Jalen Mason, not at maze anymore. Uh, that this, I believe is, uh, hit an old profile yeah. that needs to probably be combined. He's, uh, at Northwest now currently. Yeah, as I say, that that needs to be changed. The the one thing that I I will add on on this too feels like Manhattan probably a little too low. Bishop Meage feels pretty high. Yeah, like it, like it, that feels a little high. Mill Valley could probably be a little higher. Uh, like 
I would have Manhattan over Derby, at least. But that's that's just me. Well, I mean, uh, what do you think? Manhattan's beat him what, like fifty times in a row? It it does feel like that Manhattan has kind of owned Derby recently. Uh, I'd have Blue Valley probably a little bit higher. Like, I I like Andale in the top ten, but um, I don't know if if they lined up against some of these other schools if they would win. So so that, that's what I think makes it tough. Did you like a top ten? Like a uh, another team that I think was uh like pretty low uh was a uh, oh, who was it that was kind of on, in the lower re- or the higher region that was I thought was still kind of low. Oh, it was a uh, Blue Valley Northwest. I think should be a, a skosh higher. Okay. So uh, it, it, it's a fun list. Uh, if you're curious, Goodland is uh, one seventy. I, I, f- I found them while I was kind of playing with this. I was gonna say uh, but, something, but I'm not gonna. Say, I'm not gonna say they're high school kids. I'm not gonna say it. It, it. It's fun to go and kind of just see the the predictions because I, I know like kind of how the the Massey formula works, but I, I'm very curious about how how it works, especially at the high school level, mm-hmm. and especially in like Kansas or like a state that isn't necessarily like what you would say is the most popular. Yeah, it's like, gonna be it's I gonna also, be fun to follow throughout the year and see how it, if it actually kind of develops the way that you know most would would think that it would. Uh, the other thing that I would be very curious about is what high schools are using this as motivation now. Like, I would love to be like, uh, who was that that was at three twenty nine? Uh, let's see, who was I forget already who? Uh, Western Plains. Uh, yeah, yeah, I would love. To, to hear like Western Plains talk about this as motivation. Oh man, and they're doing the Chargers dirty. Burton at three thirty three. Uh, yeah, let's <laughs> let's see. Uh, yeah, we we'll we'll have to follow along with this throughout the year. We might make this a thing. Maybe on Sundays too. Then we can we can give Jimmy a little bit of crap for it. Uh, just follow along where Junction City's at <laughs> uh, the the entire way. We're, yeah, we're. We track them throughout the year. Yeah, but it, it is it is kind of an interesting tool to to go through and look at and see uh, all the different things. And I, I do think at the end of the day, like it, it'll be fun and interesting for people to follow along with the projections and the ratings and everything. More than anything, though, I think this is really nice to be able to go into a, a school and, and just see, okay, this is kind of the talent that's been developed from there. Like we know, obviously, yeah. like, like Free State right here, for example has had a, a pretty good sh- run of guys over the last decade that have played football at this level. You see Corcoran, Garber, Clements, France, and there you know there are more outside of that. Like It's a long list there for them, so it's interesting uh, to be able to go in and kind of see stuff like that. So uh, it'll be fun to follow along and uh, see how that all goes. The, and the a good reminder. I, I would like oh, go to ahead. Uh... – You're good. Go ahead. Oh, the other thing that I, I'd, I'd really like to know at, at the high school level is if somebody, like, does the number one team at the end of the year claim that they're the best team in the state? Yes, I think somebody should claim a computer championship. I will, I, like, I'll personally send them a banner that says, on three Massey <laughs> ratings state champs. And I want it to be somebody that didn't win the state title. You know, I... Uh, however that ends up working out. This is the other thing that I was going to point out was uh, the Massey ratings also shooting out predictions on the schedule page for all of the college teams. So here's K state. And uh, as was, as was pointed out uh, when this feature initially went live by some people on the board, yes, K state currently projected to win every single game on their schedule this year. I think their closest game uh, is the, the game at Iowa state. So games at Iowa State and West Virginia projected to be their closest this year. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. Yeah, it's a really fun tool. Like if you have like time to just sit and kind of just play around, I would recommend doing that because it's it's really fun to look at at the high school and college level. Yeah, no doubt about it. All right. 
Before we get out of here, a uh, good time to remind you that we are just over a week away from week zero starting in the start of the college football season. And if you want to join your Wildcats in Ireland as they kick off the 2025 football season against Iowa State in the Aer Lingus College Football Classic, game tickets can be secured now through a travel or hospitality package. All-inclusive travel packages include premium game tickets, luxury hotel accommodations, and exclusive K-State welcome experience, and more. Game day hospitality packages include premium in-stadium hospitality with food and drinks and premium game tickets. Don't miss out on the trip of a lifetime. Book your package now at cats2ireland.com. That's cats, the number two, ireland.com. So uh, everybody get on that and, you know, keep, I guess, fantasizing next weekend when you're watching Florida State and Georgia Tech about what K-State will look like uh, over there next season. It'll be a fun time and good to know that football is getting closer. We only have a handful of more shows before uh, we have K-State football as well. So that will do it for us today. For Drew Galloway, I'm Mason Vo. Thanks for watching K-State Online. Back again on Sunday for the Sunday Show.